I'm Kevin Marr. I'm Rusty Ward. And you're watching So Bad It's Good, where we look at notoriously bad films and tell you whether or not they're worth seeing. This week we're reviewing Pulgasari, a 1985 Godzilla-style monster movie made by North Korean leader Kim Jong-il. What do you Great. call him, a dictator? Uh, I guess he is a hey, yeah, North hey, Korean, hey, why don't North you keep your uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. politics out <laughs> yeah, yeah, of this? Yeah, yeah. It's a movie show. Maybe we should say misunderstood political <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> This movie was directed by Shin Sang-ok, a South Korean filmmaker that was kidnapped by Kim Jong-il in 1978 and forced to make movies for him. The film's been interpreted as being a metaphor about the dangers of capitalism and the power of the collective. But in an ironic twist, the film portrays a dastardly elite that starves out the country's peasants, much like the North Korean government will do about five years after this film. Basically, we have something that's like a Godzilla movie, the difference being that Pulgasari starts off very small. It's created in a jail cell by a dying blacksmith who forces together rice and mud, creating a Happy Meal toy. That's when this movie takes a turn for the adorable. And you know it's adorable because of the music they play when we first see Little Pulgasari. <laughs> and before this movie becomes a traditional Godzilla film, it takes on elements of other familiar movies as the monster grows up. There's kind of a Toy Story feel, goes into child's play, and eventually has a Harry and the Hendersons vibe. There's a lot of great evil laughing in this. That is the international language right there. Whenever a bad guy says something horrible, it's followed by a round of sinister guffawing. <laughs> My favorite evil laugher in this movie was the executioner. That was a guy that really loves his job. <laughs> to trap the monster, the villain uses some tactics that are very Wile E. Coyote-esque. Yes, from giant cages to covered pits, even at one point there's ancient Korean rockets. Which presumably he got from an ancient Korean acme, or from the U.S. government. So Rusty, what's your final review? Well, I thought the story behind this movie was great. A director being kidnapped is thrilling. It's actually a lot more thrilling than the actual movie. So I thought it was a little bit slow and I wouldn't recommend it. I agree. The backstory is great. The movie is, doesn't live up to it. I enjoyed getting to see a practical monster suit monster uh, instead of like a CGI creature. But all in all, the movie really requires your full concentration to read the subtitles. And I don't think I got out of it what I put into it. It was too much effort for Kevin. Right now, Michael Drake hasn't a care in the world. He's off on a camping holiday in California with his wife and two children, plus two dogs and a litter of puppies. What Drake doesn't know is that there are skeletons in his family closet and the bones are about to start rattling with a vengeance. You see, his name isn't really Drake. In the old country, it's pronounced Dracula. You are the only direct descendant. He wants your blood. Now there's a nice doggy, but before you pet it, take a good look. It might be a friend of Zoltan, hound of Dracula.